Hello everyone, welcome back to my island. In this video, I will be showing you how to set up ocean biome. And in this example, I'll be using seaweed. I have a few of those already set up using Brushify IO. If you're using the same system for your landscape material, then this video is for you. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my M landscape. And we'll be using some of these grass types that were originally given. So the first thing I'm going to do is find my M landscape. And here in the material function, we're going to go ahead and select our next material that we're going to change. Well, this is actually a grass type that's going to be spawning on the seaweed. So we finished the previous rock formations in the previous video, if you guys have been following this. If you're new to this, then I recommend going back. But here I am going to be selecting the next uh, sample of grass, which is named beach. And this one right here is going to get pulled up all the way to the top. So that way everything aligned. And we're going to rename all this to Seaweed01. And I believe this is the original Brushify IO set up for the pebbles, but we're going to be renaming this and changing it to Seaweed01. And of course, whatever you're working with, you can change it to any name you want to. Now, make sure the value remains at one for all of them. Uh, I've previously mentioned that uh, I was not properly setting up some of these settings uh, where it says zero or two, make sure it says to one. So here, we're gonna change the name to seaweed01 as well so that way it matches up and for the grass type we're going to change from the beach to seaweed01 as well here are some examples that i'll be using all of these seaweed formations are available for free through mega scans you can download them now once you do that and import them into your content folder you'll be able to use that as a grass type. So let's go ahead and expand this just a little bit so we can see what we're working here with. And as I've mentioned before, you want to make sure you can find this by clicking on that lens loop and rename this to Seaweed01. And we're going to have a few of those. Each of those is going to be designated to each landscape material. I'm going to go ahead and delete all the grass values here and we're going to add a new area elements. I'm going to go ahead and start with 20 of them and I'm going to go ahead and change my content browser to the seaweed of static mesh that I have. I do recommend using multiple content browsers if you're working with Unreal Engine. It's very useful. And here I'm going to go ahead and change the grass density and scale. And this will be repeated for all the rest of the process. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so that way you guys can see the final result. You can change the grass density to whatever you want. And the same applies for the scale, but make sure you keep it uniform. And I have not changed anything else in the settings yet. Same applies for the cold distance. This is something that's going to be done at the end. But to see the results, I'll have to change the value here. And I believe this was not properly connected. So let's go ahead and change this to false. And this is gonna set to true. And then I'm gonna click save. And now it should spawn the seaweed on my world. Now, of course, it's gonna take some time to compile shaders and I will be using the compile booster to speed up the process of the shaders now. Of course, I cut it off and waited for that to finish the process. And speeding up the process of importing all of the seaweed because it's exactly the same process. And you have seen me do this many times with the grass types, rock formation. So you should be familiar with how this works. And again, whatever world you're working with, just be comfortable with the numbers that you're plugging in. There's nothing special to it. It's just how dense you want the grass to be. So, ranging it from 100 to a couple hundred is somewhere I would like to keep it at. 
And since we have almost 20 of those different grass types, I'm not exceeding more than a thousand. So let's go ahead and find my other grass types that I had, which is another seaweed formations. What I'm trying to do here is create one of the biomes that's going to contain only seaweed. The second one is going to be also seaweed, but we're going to have taller grass growing and we're going to mix them all together. And then we're going to also populate some of the seashells and some of the dead corals as well to give it a little bit more variation. And now here's the fly through to see what we have created so far. But we have a couple more to go. We have about five more to add. And if the seaweed looks too tall or does not the size that you're looking for, you can always change the scale. I keep it between 0 0.005 to about maximum one. I try not to go higher than the original scale just because it doesn't look all right after that. If you're trying to upscale the original size of the mesh, but downsizing it, will create different variations and of course with all the rotations and random generation procedural setup it's difficult to tell which static mesh repeats and that's what I like about procedural generation here you don't have to spend all this time adding and painting all of this stuff only relying on the textures that have been applied to your landscape more of a materials, landscape materials, not actual textures. And the result is pretty stunning. I actually like the variation of colors of red and maroon. And we'll get some yellow in there, a little bit of dark colors. And once you'll be able to swim through here, as of right now, none of these static meshes have an ability to move. So if you were to be underwater, they are non-movable static mesh, but we will use some of the blueprints from other grass types that do have that and we'll implement that into the world so that way it will look more realistic and more alive. The other thing, keep in mind that since this is going to be underwater and deep in the ocean, the visibility is going to be at a much, much shorter distance. So the cool distance will be reduced and every time you add the new grass type, make sure you rebuild your grass maps. You can go ahead and go to your build options and build grass maps. Once you do that, the, the message should disappear and you can see that there's no more longer a message appearing at the top left of the screen. And here we have another grass, actually another seaweed that I have to fill in and it looks all in the dark colors but we'll get to that soon and we have also some of this other vegetation spawning in the water and that is because it has not been fixed yet but I'll get to that and looks like I have some of the vegetation and rock forming on the cliffs in the water but that can be fixed I think one of the grass types was not properly set up. So by duplicating your grass type, you can create a second variation of that. Go ahead and open that up and you can go ahead and delete all of the seaweed formation that you had there or you can keep them. And by clicking on the arrow, you can choose different static meshes that you try to apply. So by clicking on your static mesh in your content browser. You can select it and then expand your little arrow over here. And by clicking it, you can see that it replaces the original static mesh or grass mesh that has been previously set up in the Seaweed 01. Now, some of these seaweed formations um, will be changing in the future if I'm not happy with the way it looks. However, we do have quite a lot to fulfill here and not all of them are going to be implemented. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit more so we can see it better. It's going to be exactly the same process, just like with the Seaweed 01. I'm going to go ahead and find the next formation, which is named Snow. 
Now this snow formation was used for a procedural rock slopes. You can see that right here. And another one at the top, which was the original snow formation. And I will not be using this in my game since it's a tropical island. I'm going to go ahead and change this to seaweed O2. And the value of that is going to be set also to 1. And whenever you rename your parameter name, make sure it's accurate. And we're going to change this to false and over here to true. So this value of this material expression has to be set to 1. Make sure all of them say that. But you can see that a few of them say number 2. And I'm going to be changing that uh, once I'm finished with this setup here. I should never touch it to begin with, but I wasn't sure what I was messing with. So, you know, it is fair to not understand some of these material functions. But once you get a hang of it, uh, make sure you keep it that way. So we're going to go ahead and choose our seaweed O2 grass material. We're going to go ahead and select that. And then we're going to go ahead and say save. Now what it's going to do is going to start to compile new shaders again. Uh, it might ask you to rebuild the grass types again. Just follow the same process and you should be seeing new results. I'm going to go ahead and click boost. And here is my final result of a new seaweed, seaweed formation. Now, in my previous projects, I have worked with seashells and the seaweed and I've done procedural boxes. And today, I'll be working with Brushify IO grass types instead because I am more familiar with how it works now and more satisfied with the results. It is much faster on the computing process and I think it has way better results. And there is a lot of stuff that has been updated, so I'm still trying to catch up with Brushify IO new updates regarding some of the updates that Joe Garth has done with the textures, making sure that they have with parallax occlusion and runtime version texturing. But that will be done in the future videos since there is a lot of fixing that I'll have to do within MI landscape itself. And let's go ahead and add about 10 of these new grass variations for our other biome that is going to be used for the sand coral. And what I'll do is going to add only seashells and the actual starfish is going to be separate since those will be more of a movable and living creatures in the waters. I'm going to go ahead and separate them completely. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and take one of these procedural rock slopes functions since this is my next function that is listed. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it right here so that way it's all in the same section. I'm going to expand this just a little bit more so you guys can see a little bit better. And we're going to rename the crater pebbles and also the desert rocks. I'm going to be after that. But we'll change all of this by the end of the video. And of course, you can add many more. There is no, I don't know if there's actual limit to this, but I haven't had any issues changing or adding new ones. So let's go ahead and name this sand coral. Since this is going to correspond to our landscape material, value is going to be set to one. I know I didn't change that on the crater pebbles yet, but we'll get to that. And I'm going to change this to false and true. Click save. And as you can see, 
even the pattern of this within the material function does not matter as long as the names are correct. Now for the compiling, you can see that you can change between the default, normal, above normal, and high. So you're going to click boost. Once it is done, here's a quick look at some of the seashells formations. Uh, like I've mentioned before, the parallax occlusion for the, the mapping is going to be done in the future videos. But I think it will look pretty cool with some of these dead corals popping off on that texture. And I think it will look cool by adding some of these seashells. Now I have many more. And we're going to go ahead and add all the way up to maybe 30. We'll see how many more we can add here. Now I do have quite, quite a lot of different seashells. I got these from... Unreal Engine Marketplace. I will drop some links to some of these static meshes that I have purchased. I think they're really good models. Now, of course, for these, I can start reducing some of the density and cool distance since I know they are small. And here is my final result. Now, of course, I skipped this through just because it's exactly the same process as I've done with all the other grass types. Um, all you got to do is just play with numbers and whatever visually you're comfortable with. There is really nothing right or wrong about how you proceed with this. Again, I'm going to compile my shaders for my corals. And we're going to go ahead and add this to my one of the functions here because this one originally was set for slopes. That's why it was not uh, showing up. So make sure you have it properly set up. And here is my final result. So now all the seashells are spawning pretty much on non-slope uh, areas of the landscape. Now, of course, I exaggerated on the amount. And we're going to have to change some of the quantities on how much of it being spawned or density of it. And here is the final look of it again. I think it's looking a little bit better. Now these seashells will be all under one biome. As of right now, you can't pick them up as a character, but it does has pretty cool visuals with all the different colors, different sizes, and, and the way they're laying on the bottom of the ocean. Now the good thing about this, they won't be spawning all the way through the world. They were only going to be spawning on this landscape material, which means they're all going to remain underwater. And some of them might be a little bit above. And of course, if you want to add them elsewhere, you can create a procedural box if you wanted to. And I would like to demonstrate one thing with the corals. So here is the reason why I don't want to use standard corals with Brushify IO grass type. Now, maybe there is a way of changing certain things, but unfortunately with some of the bigger corals, I did not like the look of it. So there is going to be a different process that I'll be doing this and playing around with some of these static meshes for the corals because I would like to create my own static meshes that are going to look a little bit different. And I will show you in just a few moments to why I don't want to use this coral as part of the procedural generation through that just because it does not look as good as I would like it to and I know I can have a way better look to it and when you guys play this game I think you would like to have something that's worth looking at and unfortunately uh, with this system these particular corals do not look too good but the corals themselves are great Static meshes is just I have a better idea for it and I will show that sometime in the future uh, Where I'll spend a little bit extra time on creating something a little bit more unique and interesting. So let's go ahead and save this and we're gonna go ahead and Wait for this to Repopulate so every time you do that here is the final look so it doesn't look too bad But again, I can create something much much nicer because when you do swim through some of these, and you can see that uh, some of these corals are just too obvious that it's exactly the same static mesh. Now, of course, if you add quite a lot of it, it might look better. But 
I want some of these stuff to spawn on the rocks and I would like to create some different formations. So what I'm going to do instead is actually use this uh, type of coral, Thai Beach Coral Pack. Uh, this is from Quixel Bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and export that in 4K resolution. I'm going to go ahead and add both of these to my Unreal Engine. And you can see that there was a texture that I'm also using particularly for that. So here is our Beach Coral Pack. I'm going to go ahead and open that up for some reason. It was not connected, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. And we're going to connect, connect the result. And also our albedo map. And all the rest of them. So we'll get the roughness, normal, and then so forth. I don't know why it was not connected when I exported this. I usually never have any issues with them. But since they're not connected, let's go ahead and just simply reconnect all of these normal maps. And here is our tiling. So we're going to have to connect those as well. Our result is going to get for the normal, for the detail normal, we're going to connect that to our normal UVs. And then same going to apply for the detail normal. Detail normal. And for the tiling, we're going to do that for our albedo and the rest of the textures. Just like that. Okay. And let's go ahead and connect that to roughness, metal, and normal. And the detail is going to be to UV on the bottom right here, just like that. And this one's going to get connected to the bottom for the adjustments. All right, so that you connect these two on the bottom right here is going to get connected to this one on the bottom just like that and then this will get connected all the way to here and that should be good to go it's going to have to click save what is the saving we can safely look at our new material and all of our content should have textures and materials applied to them now. So let's go ahead and find our new corals. And you can see that we have a little star one, meaning that we haven't saved it yet. So each coral now has its own texture. I'm going to go ahead and click Save All before we continue. Now I'll be using five of those in the same biome as our seashell. Let's go ahead and find or use one of the content browsers to open up the location for our landscape. So we've got to brushify materials landscape under functions. And here is our uh, M landscape. So here, we're not going to actually change anything. I'm actually looking for sand coral. Here we go. So here we have the corals that I've previously added. And I'm going to go ahead and replace each of those with the ones I've just added from the Quixel bridge. So I'm going to click on that arrow. Like I said before, we're going to come back to changing the distances and the amount of those that we have. And notice every time I add a static mesh, this grass type, it changes the texture to none. And then it takes some time to compile it and then 
it should be good now. Now, last but not least, we have one more to add. And we're going to change some of these numbers so that way they're not too overcrowded. And pay attention to this grass density. So I've changed all the way from 400 to about 15. So we've decreased this because this is some coral pieces and they're not as heavily dense in the ocean as the grass type would be. And when I say grass type, I'm employing it towards the seaweed. So here I got to rebuild our grass maps again to make sure that everything is calculated. Now let's go ahead and wait for it to populate. And there we have some of the corals. And this is why I like them a little bit more because some of these corals are halfway into the surface of the ground, which makes them a little bit more unique because not only that they're rotating in different directions, uh, from this distance, even hard to tell that it's exactly the same static mesh. That's what I like about it because they're not too tall. They're short enough for you not to be able to tell the difference. Now, if you're not satisfied with the grass density, you can always go back and add a little bit more. And every time you do that, your preview screen will get rid of all your grass types including all the one that on your landscape. But once that's done, you'll be able to see them again. But while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and export my Thai Beach Coral Pack, the second version of it, and add some of these new starfishes to my content browser. So here we have a full screen view, preview of the final result of this sand coral biome. And again, I think it looks pretty cool when you mix it more of a, like an open area with other vegetation, but it does feel empty. It feels like it's just more of like a desert. It's missing grass, I feel like. So we're going to add some of that as well to it. Otherwise, it doesn't feel realistic. It doesn't have that transition between the heavy vegetation to these corals. But before we do that, we're going to add the other five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to make it about 40 of these area elements. And this should be pretty simple because all we're going to do is repeat the process, just adding the new types. We already know that we don't want to have too many. So decreasing it to about 30 and the cold distance is at 3500. Again, since it's all going to be underwater, uh, the view is going to be a much closer distance. It's going to be a little bit dark. You're going to have some acoustics and all that going on there. So cold distance will be changed in the future, probably at much shorter distance than 3200. But for right now, for the visual demonstration, we'll keep it where it is. As we develop this, we'll continue to change numbers and play with them to make sure that they are not being generated farther than you can actually see, because otherwise there's really no point of that. And that will give us more room to build other things that we would like to put into this world that it can generate with the farther cool distance and higher grass density if we have to. But having 10,000 is definitely an overboard for such a small item that we'll barely be able to see underwater at such a distance. So again, depending on which biome you're working with, the first two important things is the grass density and the cool distance. Now the scale again, you can play around with this, uh, but I recommend keeping it uniformed. And here is a full screen preview of what it looks like now. And what I like about this is now a mixture of different colors. We have a little bit of green, a little bit of white, uh, dead corals. But do keep in mind there will be big rock formations somewhere in between here with those other beautiful corals that I've shown. Uh, it's just going to be done differently. Just think of this 
as a landscape material in a way that has all of these three-dimensional objects in the world, which hopefully in the future you'll be able to pick up, but I have not figured out how to do that yet. So not too concerned about it. I am more looking for a visual representation of this. So and I think I've, I've achieved pretty good look, but we're still missing that grass. So you can see that there's some overlapping here and there, but it's not too bad. And they are laying fairly far away from each other. It does a little bit look clustered, but we will add some of the small seaweed formations to it to make it look a little bit different from what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding all this other seaweed formation. There is quite a lot of them. You can see that all the green circles with the check mark on it. This is all the stuff that I actually already have downloaded, installed. Uh, there is a lot of process that has been put into it. And again, make sure that you're downloading same resolution, uh, same textures and materials that you need. You can always check what you're actually downloading. And if you have any issues with Quixel Bridge or installing Megascans, I actually do have a video on that. And trust me, I've had issues with that about two years ago too. And I felt like pulling my hair out myself. So I do understand the frustration if somebody's having issues with that. But if you don't, that's good. That means it's working right. So we have some sea spinach. I'll add download that as well. We can uh, probably utilize that in the future. Again, my goal to use all this different type of vegetation uh, to make it more realistic. Here we have the eelgrass, and I think that will look really cool with this biome that I'm currently working with. So let's go ahead and find it in our content folder for Megascans. I do have two folders. Uh, one of them contains all this seagrass vegetation that I need, and we have about eight of them. So what I'm going to do, as I did previously, is continue to expand our sand coral landscape material with this grass type. So we have about a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we have 40 here. So let's add eight more. And you can see that it's doing just fine on being able to handle this. I'm going to expand that little arrow and repeat the same process. Now the grass density, of course, here is going to be higher than the corals that we previously worked with, but a little bit less than the rest of the vegetation that I have in the ocean. And here is the final look of it. Let's go ahead and change these densities just a little bit because I, I feel like I over, overdid it with those stuff. So dropping from 400 to about 100 to 200 of grass density and still keeping the cool distance about to 3,000 to 4,000 head of a distance. And you're not familiar with the cool distance uh, Unreal Engine units, you can also look that up on Google or even Unreal Engine documentation to get you an idea of what the distance that is. I think it's like a few meters, it's not really that far. And I will be covering more on the cool distance in the future. It's going to be completely dedicated just to that for every single that grass type vegetation that's in this world to make sure it looks the way I want to. And here is a quick look at it now. So now that way, if you were to swim underwater, this is what you would see. And we'll be expanding this in the future, add a little bit more of other type of vegetation. And keep in mind, there's going to be a school system added to this world as well. There's going to be different fish swimming underwater here, and you'll be able to find different marine world and learn about it if you spend more time on it. Um, it's going to be a lot of cool things added to the world, but I really like the transitions here. There's a lot of cool things that are already happening. And look, it only took us about 40 minutes to build this. 
Now, of course, I've sped up some of it, but it took me about three to four hours just to get this really good look of it. And that's a very good experience with Unreal Engine. So the best part about this is just repetition. And here is the final look of it. And I'm starting to like it. Now, again, we'll add some of the movements so the grass moves underwater. We'll have some sun rays coming down from the above of the ocean. Yes, it's going to look pretty cool. I think it's going to be a lot of stuff added to it. There's going to be a lot of cool places to explore. Uh, there's a lot of different seaweed, rock formations being placed. Uh, I can't wait to see how this landscape is going to look with the parallax occlusion. I think all these rock formations are going to be more 3D. And all these corals that are drawn on this texture is going to be popping out as well. And you can see the details and how dense this grass really is. So I'm definitely liking it. Um, but don't forget to rebuild your maps. I have about 16 of them that needs to be rebuilt. And I've already shown you how to do that. And you can see in the far ground that this grass type is being generated as I move my camera. But do keep in mind, you're not going to be able to see that far underwater. Just because the water is not that clear. But the idea is there, and here you can see that the slope is not populated, is because we did not create that. Remember how I had to change the function within the M landscape? That's why you don't see any of that vegetation there, which is totally cool, because I will add something else to it in the future. And here is my ship, the sunken ship that I have in the game. I've shown the video before on how I build this, and I finally have added a little bit more landscape to it to make it look more realistic like it has sunken into the bottom of the ocean uh, with added seaweed formations you can see that it's grown through the ship inside of it you see some sea, uh, seaweed corals grown everywhere and i'll be adding more stuff to it i think it's starting to look a little bit more alive you know there's going to be fish swimming through here now obviously i still have a lot of stuff that i got to change here regarding the actual textures making sure that everything looks like it's been here for quite some time but that's just something in the future the basic concept idea of having it set up the way it is i think i have achieved that and again anything that's protruding through some of these ship walls i'll clean it up if i have to uh, there's a couple tweaks that needs to be done here and here but Here's the bottom part of the ocean uh, of the ship, and it's looking pretty cool. It's even going to the second floor, and I think I will be adding the actual procedural boxes of the seaweed on upper levers, upper upper levels of the ship. But other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. It's a big ship to explore, and I hope you guys will enjoy this in the future. And I do hope you guys like this video and learn something new. And I will see you guys in the next video.